So we just got done watching Tron. Yes. I'm Lee. I'm Joe. And we are the Rewinders, and uh, we watched these movies and back in the day. Yeah. And remembering them fondly, and now watching them again as adults to see if they still hold up. They're still entertaining. Fond. Fond Ish. Fondish. Yeah, fondish. So did you, was Tron a, a childhood favorite of yours? Uh, the movie was more of a thing that was there. Yep. The part of Tron that was a huge part of my childhood were the games. Yep, and that's exactly what I remember more than the movie is. Going to the arcades and seeing the several different types of games they had. Because yep. they had like a tank game, mm -hmm. a disc game, maybe two or three different disc games. You had the stand-up arcade mm -hmm. machine. You had the uh, the sit-inside arcade machine. Yep. You had the arcade machine with the dials. Yep. And you had the sit down where you got four different players. I I love them all. That and that's what I remember more than the actual movie. What I remember is just yeah the video game parts of the movie of the light cycles, which are awesome. Mm -hmm. And then the tanks and then the flying, well the the, the disc, disc fights. Yeah. Disc fights were very good. I thought pretty cool. It was I think more suited for the arcade than it mm -hmm. was. For film, I'm kind of giving away my. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, we could do a plot, but I also agree that it it, all, it just felt to me watching it again that it's more of a, hey, we can do this cool animation lighting thing. Let's make a movie around that. Yeah, that's what it kind of seemed like to me. Like it's a new technology. How do we show this? Because around that time, it seemed like Disney was trying new things in the early '80s. I know this mm -hmm. movie. Um, uh, I know you didn't see it. The black hole that was different but they're trying different things pushing technology i guess but the plot as a kid it didn't matter oh no 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 there was too many other things happening too mm -hmm. too much art too much computer art too much light cycles <laughs> yeah i mean okay whatever it doesn't matter yeah it didn't matter as a kid mm -hmm. so oh, i had to watch it twice First time I fell asleep, <laughs> it was just, I think I got 20 minutes in and just, no, nope, I'm done. Then I watched it again today and uh, really try. okay, I, I really sat down, all right, what's the plot of this movie? And what I gathered was, let's see, look at my, uh, it says, uh, okay, um, so Flynn was a video game designer and he worked for a, a company named Encom. Mm -hmm. and there's a, another computer programmer named Dillinger and he took Finn's game video game, and became rich with it and powerful in that company, right? Yup. Okay. And then and then Dillinger, being a bad, evil guy, made or transformed the, an AI, or a computer program into an AI program. Something like and that, And that became yeah. the master control program. Yep. Okay. And, but the master control program got too powerful and wanted to help China become the... I didn't know. Anyway. I, yeah, I just... Uh, I think I'm one scene, the NCP starts explaining that he's bored doing stuff inside their own network, M and he wants to screw around with world powers. MCP! <laughs> yep, and then there's two other uh, Flynn's friends, and they work at NCOM, and they want to figure out what's going on, too. But their motivation is basically... Hey, we got locked out. Yeah, yeah, they got locked out of there. So their, let's yeah. help our guy who got kicked out well, hack into the system. Well, one of the guys is he's Alan. He's he's also a programmer, and he he's the one who made the Tron uh, program. program. Yeah, and that was just go inside and snoop around and find out what Dillinger was up to. And that's all I. Got. It was a yeah. I mean, the thing was is that it was supposed to guard from stuff coming in. Okay. So like it's kind of like a firewall. Program, oh, yeah. but then it also watches what's going on inside the network, so gotcha. it would also keep tabs on programs within the network, and that was a big no no to do. Yep. And so they all sneak in at one night, and of course, oh, and the uh, the woman scientist, Laura, I think her name. Was? We'll go with that. We'll sure. go with that. Lady scientist Lady was working scientist. on a 3D laser or digitizing beam, and of course the. The mass control program gets control of the laser beam and hits... Oh, barking. Shush. Yeah, you got shush. 
And, and of course, hits Finn, and he gets sent into the program, and now that's where the adventure begins. All right, I'd, I'd like just to take a moment to talk okay. about what the fuck is NCOM? <laughs> Woo! Yeah, I agree. Yeah, what's NCOM? What? <laughs> okay, so we have this shot in the movie. I, I This is early for a breakdown, but... It's fine. It shows that there are cubicles yep, to halfway yep. across mm-hmm. L.A. and back. And... These are all supposed to be programmers. Okay, so it's a computer company. Yeah, yeah. What are they... What is their... Mm-hmm. Okay, yep, yeah, go on. Sorry. <laughs> so why do they have giant lasers in the basement? I wondered that. So, yeah, it starts off as... Okay, comes in a cool... Hel- the Dillin- Dillinger comes in in a helicopter. Rich has a huge office with an, a, a cool-looking desk with, and with the um, M- MPC built into it. Basically, like, yeah, Updates yeah. him constantly and what's going on. And then, yeah, it shows Alan then at his cubicle. You're right. But... In the basement, they're making a laser beam? And if you look what? at the elevator going down, there's two fucking lasers yep. in their yeah, building. And, and I apologize for my language to all the children out there. No, we're, I think we're rated... We're, I think we're... Uh, I think I put that we're... We swear in this <gasps> bad on, on iTunes. So it has an E in there for explicit oh, language. Oh, that's what that E was for. I didn't know if it was E... I, I have to look at it again, but I don't know if it's E for... Explicit, excellent. Excellent or everyone... <laughs> Or enough, but um, that was you're right. What so then? What that's why I was so confused is really he has to, he Flynn lost a video game, or lo- he made a video game and then he stole it and then he became yeah. yeah. The whole rise of Dillinger doesn't make sense. No. It's just an excuse for an excuse. the two he, characters to have conflict. Evil company, evil guy. Um. David Warner, I think, was the actor. He's always evil guy in eighties and nineties movies. <laughs> we'll we'll see him again as we review more oh, movies because sure. he's great. But uh, yeah, that was the strangest thing. So Flynn says because he's a he's a cool eighties hippie type of guy yeah. played by Je- uh, Jeff Bridges is like forget it. I'm just going to open up my arcade, an arcade that has uh, it's rocking. Every I mean, it is the early eighties and ro- yeah. arcades were big, but I just know I remember seeing. It, Everyone was there. Yeah, mm-hmm. from from eight year old kid to eighty year old. There was like a couple of old people just wander around in suits and and, <laughs> and dresses. And like, whoa, let's go play some space invaders or whatnot. So, yeah, Flynn just said, "Forget I'm just gonna come uh, and hang out with fourteen year old boys playing video games." And it's kind of kind of creepy what he mm-hmm. does mm-hmm. when they introduce him playing. Uh, an arcade game. Everyone's like, "Oh man, yeah!" And, he, and then he was sweating afterwards. I don't know if you noticed that. And he goes up to his apartment, uh, right above, of course, Flynn's video arcade, mm-hmm. and talks to uh, his two friends who are trying to figure out what's going on with Encon. And apparently, the woman dated him. Yeah, they briefly. Lorna kinda... dated, and that. Ugh, so weird. Anyway, <laughs> so they, they convince him, "Hey, let's go in and see what's going on." And that's when he gets zapped into Tron World. And I think the movie was ahead of its time, too. Because yeah. it, it was, eight, was yeah. it 82, personal computers weren't really nope. yeah. big. No. So I think that's another reason why I probably didn't do that well back then, at least. Or I don't remember, because... Oh, no, no, no. This, this was a very niche movie. It, exactly. It still is. It's, it, it seems like that, because you're just trying to explain... Com- basically, com- how computers work to people that don't have them in their homes yep. from back then, and it's yep. really a nerdy, nerdy script. Oh, it's it's complete nerd. Every, yep. Everything that they um, named basically is a computer function. Yep. And if you don't know what they do, it yep. doesn't make sense. And even when you do know what they do, sometimes that still yep. doesn't even make sense. So I just remember as a kid, it's or whatever it's. The uh, bad company. They're in the computer. They're they're good guys, just trying to stop the bad guys that are in the computer. D- who cares? That's really it. And I want to know what happens to that orange. They zap the right. orange. They zap the orange. And they, if you listen to the old guy who was one of the founders of Encom, that's right. He mentions that you're supposed to zap it, put it in the computer, and then you unzap it. That's true. They never unzap, they never the, unzap orange. the orange. So in <sighs> Tron World. There's like an orange floating around that no one knows what it is, what it's for, or anything like was, that. Or was orange the bite? The floating... Oh, no, 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 no. You're thinking bit. Oh, bit. Or, oh, yeah. Bites but, are more than bits. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. Okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot. So, 
early we see Flynn trying to, he sent his own uh, program in to the computer, yep. and it was Clue, Clue was the name, which I'm sure stands for something. You, off the top of my head, I don't know. But what, and that, this kind of sets up the, this weird idea of, so, you know, Flynn played by Jeff Bridges, and he mm-hmm. sends his program in, and it's Jeff Bridges. So Clue looked exactly like Jeff Bridges. Yep, so Alan, the computer programmer, looks, is, has his, Tron looks like him. And then Laura, Laura Lorna, whatever, f- woman, woman scientist, because she has no characteristics because it's a movie. Yeah. And they don't care. She also has a character in there. Dillinger has a ba- bad guy, so on and so forth. Which his doesn't make as much sense, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Well, it does because in the movie, Dillinger is... He really never knew how to do anything, so he's second in command where the match well, control program is taking over and getting smarter and smarter. Good point. And that point. and he was created by the old scientist guy. Yeah. Which who, had who who was mansplaining <laughs> to the lady scientist of what the laser beam does. Yeah. Like little, little, little no it's, what we're doing is this. And she should say, Yeah, I've been down here for months now. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Shut up, old man. But Anyway. So yeah, so uh, Flynn gets zapped into into Tron land. Yep. So that way the M- MCP can deal with him. But he instead says, well, let's put you inside of... We'll, we'll test you and put you in, in, in games. Yeah. Like it, a gladiator type. Yeah, and it doesn't make sense because... Yeah, it, why don't you just kill him? Because I also think they were the games that uh, Flynn also yes. created. So what makes you think he's going to be bad at them if he created them in movie sense, not mm-hmm. like real world sense. But. So you think NCOM is, is, is like a video game? They started as a video game company? No. No? No. And then that they're trying to, maybe the, maybe the laser beam was to be no. greedy. No. Okay. Anyway, no. it doesn't matter. They're, they're, <laughs> evil. they're evil. Yeah. So Flynn is now stuck in there and he, he's interacting with all these other programs, which are just obviously people. And his first, his first fight is, or something like that, he goes to fight um, another program, and he's, they're kind of happy. Not fighting, but they're playing like a weird ball game. Uh, it's like a... It's not lacrosse. It's I forgot what that hoop is called. Highlight. Highlight, yeah. Yep. It's and that then, but hitting off a wall and then whatever. rings and you could follow your doom. And they're both kind of like, okay, we're just playing a friendly game. And the, the other program should be like, Knowing this is to the death. Yeah. Where Flynn should be, okay, this is weird, but I'm in, okay, and then started to realize. My assumption is that the other program was cocky okay. and was like, oh, I'm going to totally beat this guy, so Maybe. whatever, even though he was like They're some. They were being friendly, though. They were being nice. And then. Well, that program was nice when you True. met him earlier. True. I don't know. Yeah, it just. Eh. And then, yeah, falls to death, and then Flynn goes, no! As Which it, who why cares? should he be why so he, connected why to... Why should he care, either? Yeah, yeah. it's not a person. Not at all. It, it was just this, these were simple programs that the MCU, MCP were, was taking over yeah. as it expanded and wanting to go help China out, apparently. <laughs> but then they get thrown in together, so they're, then, the, then the light cycle thing happens. Oh. Not enough light cycles in the Really movie. short light cycle, and then they break out and they're running around. It, oh, it's um, Flynn... Tron, Tron and Ram. Ram. Two, two other programs. And they and Flynn is pretending that he doesn't... He's just, I'm a, I'm a program too. Beep, boop, but I can boop. do all these special things. <laughs> but, um... Really, where do we skip at? Because <laughs> it just kind of meanders. Well, yeah, it's it just... Me, then it just meanders. It's just then, a bunch of technical displays mm-hmm. of this is what we can do with computers right now and weak plot... And that, I think really that, that after the light cycle, just kind of, eh, I no longer have really paying that much attention. It's just a big gap until the end, really. I remember as a kid, you know, after light cycles, and the next thing I really remembered was the flying solar winged yeah, thing. I, it's I, not I, solar, but it's, it's yeah. a big winged ship towards the end. Because it looked so, neat. Yeah, so it, I think that's why it stuck in my brain as a kid. It just looked really cool. So they yeah, they get to or they decide or we have to go and talk to and try to communicate with the outside world with the user, with which the would user. have been Tron's user, Alan. which is Alan. Then. That's so 
immediately. Which but, he was locked out. Mm-hmm. So how... It didn't make sense. Yeah, unlock like, that? I don't know, but... And why was he sitting at a terminal ex- at that exact point in time? Yeah, we didn't see, you know, we didn't see that in the movie. All we saw was Jeff Bridges get zapped, zapped into... In. Yeah. But then they go to where the mass control program is, and it's the big floating... That's the other thing. The big, red, spinning. wide-eyed, constantly spinning head thing. That is that not... Not evil looking at no, all. I mean, it was just kind of goofy looking. I think it was a little yeah, more it was a little evil. I mean they use it in South Park for an episode, I think, as a god or something. Oh I'm sure. But they all have they have that have their discs that they use to as as energy things and they mm-hmm. shoot they throw it at other people to take them out. Yeah. But it also says that everything is I think like they say everything in that disc is your life. Like it's has all your information in it, but then you use it as a weapon. I'm I'm just assuming that it's a uh, visual version of the ones and zeros that you find on the platter of your hard drive, your disc space that contains their program. Sure. I'm assuming because when he lifted it up. Sent it up to Alan. Alan apparently wrote to the disc. Oh, I missed that. The program okay. that could stop the MCP. And that's how they communicated. Yeah. Oh. So, yep, missed that completely. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> Get to the end, they fight. Uh, the, the evil guy. Oh, Sark. Sark? Stark? Stark. Stark was... Stark was, was the, the Dillinger. Yeah. But he was second in command, evil guy, and... I thought it was pretty cool when Tron threw his disc at his head and it oh yeah and it slid open stuff. and little brain bits things came out, but they didn't die. They just got bigger apparently. Bigger. But then they save the day and then yeah. he gets out and everything lights up at the end. Oh, all the t- so everything was lighting up is all it really was is so they defeated the AI evil program and now. Everyone in Tron land was happy and, oh, peaceful. Everything gets colored up and light. Yep. Laser beams shoot up into the sky, whatever. Yeah. And yeah. all that means is, oh, my terminal turned back on. I have access to... My user. Our, my user. Okay, that's it. Yep. But it's so this glorious... <sighs> <laughs> and on top of that, um, it resolves the conflict between the main bad guy and uh, dude man, good guy... Um, Flynn. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Flynn went in there to to get proof that he made the video game first. Yeah, so when when he's done with Tronland, their nine-pin printer spits out a, mm-hmm. hey, by the way, Flynn totally did it. And it he's like, right yes! Here. Yeah, and <laughs> proof. It, it says right here, it's just a printed out document that, <laughs> a typewriter document that you could have done yourself saying, I made this at this time. <laughs> Take it to court now. And, see, look. I need it. my monies. And the very next scene is... He, he's CEO he, he, or he's something CEO, he's, now. he's now in charge. This is the worst and that ends. And company down. ever. <laughs> yep. And that just ends. I don't know. Do you have anything else on it? Um, when I went through just watching it, I, I hit two things that, that stood out. And one was the whole, like, they wanted to have this underlay of religion in there between users and programs. Oh, and yeah. And then, when I started oh, yeah. following that trace, it brought me to, oh, this is also uh, something on communism. So it was oh, a geez. double whammy where they were uh, making a, a statement about religion, and then that brought us to fighting communism. In the fact, and I, wow. I, I happened to just spend some time watching extras on my 20th anniversary DVD, and they, the guy actually explained it, saying that, it was a fight. The MCP was the oh, big geez. machine in the middle. It was spinning and then red. Oh, I didn't even get that. And it was controlling everything. Wow. And no one had any power for themselves. And oh, he just was my. taking it all for himself. And then they democratized the computer network America. by making all the programs more free with their users and stuff. Oh. So that also ties up with uh, communism um, is not, uh, doesn't like religion as well. That's true. That's wow. But yeah, there's a couple scenes where Flynn then says, "I'm actually a user," and they just look at him like, "Oh my god!" You're when Ram is dying, he's he's touched God basically, and is okay to die. And I didn't even notice that. And I made and one of my notes for there was in that moment was, 
okay, now they're making a humanist statement, which is more about every person is God in some fashion. Man. It, it, it's, they should have just, it got out of hand. Yeah, it, it totally got out of hand. They should have just concentrated on a good story. Because all those metaphors ended up drowning out the main story, and the story got so diluted that just it doesn't, yeah. it didn't matter. They're just, it's spectacle at that point. Mm hmm. And there was really nothing else. I love the matte paintings, though. They had some good matte paintings. <laughs> the only problem was is that when you put people on them, yep. it's like, well, <laughs> what's the scale here? What's what, no. it, How deep is this hole? Is that a hole, or is it going up? I can't quite tell. It's hard to tell. And the other thing they kept on screwing up was, so the bad guys are in red, because, okay, now we know communism. Good guys are in blue. But then in the light cycles, it confused me because you see the bad guys are, are in the blue. blue cycles, and then the other ones are in red, yellow, and orange or something. And that was, yeah. what, are you, what are you doing? Doesn't make sense. What, come on. Put them all in blue. Yeah. That's simple for me. I'm an idiot kid <laughs> in the 80s. I can't pay attention. Ooh, light cycle. That was about it. Yeah. Uh, I saw some, I think I recognized a reference to Tron... Well, because the, the Stark guy flies around in this big ship. Yes. And for some odd reason, it made me... Th I was like, this wasn't a video game. Like, someone made this later on in the 90s to be looking like that. And all I could pull was, it's possibly Sylphied, which was a space shooter that was on the Sega wow. CD that almost looked exactly like that. Nothing they copied it. I think it was more... Yeah, you know, well, that way, yes. Yeah, to, hey, this was kind of like Tron. Here you go. Well, I, I didn't like it as an adult. I, I, I understand. I, so I would, I would say no to watching this new. Although, I, did people like, like the sequel? I didn't like Tron. I didn't even see the sequel. Didn't see, I did not like Tron. Like I, I liked the, the song. The, the music was great. It was Daft da Punk. Yeah, yeah. It was great score, but not to talk about the sequel. But I guess if you're going to watch a sequel, this... You might have to power through this one, maybe, or go to Wikipedia, which I did to figure out some things. Cause yeah. Was it's a movie that needed to be workshopped before they went to production. That's my feel on and it. And probably what happened was they were working so hard on the effects that they just didn't have time or money budget then to work on the script. And just said, whatever, it looks neat and interesting. It'll be fine on that mm -hmm. aspect alone. And... And throughout it, I mean, there's fun little nerdy tidbits throughout the whole movie. Like, at one point, there's a, a very um, well-known Atari-ish kind of sound that happens. Yep. Uh, at another point, they're being super serious and pointing at the map and saying, you got to get these guys, you got to get these guys. And then there's Pac-Man right behind them, and yep. you hear him going, waka, 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 waka. It's like, how can you take this scene seriously mm -hmm. right now? And my biggest catch... <laughs> For the whole movie, which I'm like, I wanted to point at it and yell nerd, was okay. Alan's Cube, if you yeah. look at it, has a poster in it that says, Gort Klatu Barada Nikto. Oh, wow. <laughs> now, is that in reference to the Evil Dead? No, because this because, is way before Evil no, Dead. Evil, I thought Evil Dead came out in 81. And this is eighty two, or is this in reference to the day, uh, the day the Earth stood, stood the day still? The Earth stood still. Oh, I'm sure it's more of that. Um, but it just was like one of those things where I'm just like, what? <sighs> wow. I don't, and Good some job of those, noticing that. yeah, some of these things though were just it was an annoyance to the actual what was happening, and like again, like I said, it just mm -hmm. was everything got watered down. Oh, the one other thing that annoyed me was. After, so they have the mass control program, big red face, they destroy it, and as it's dying, you can see it's an old program now, and it's the old guy because he's the one who made this program as a chess game. Yeah, but he's teletyping. And then you hear, tele, you hear uh, yeah, exactly, you hear a, a typewriter. Mm hmm Wait, what? So apparently he was a typewriting program. He was program a typewriting... Before he was a... a and then he just goes uh, like, chess piece, chess bam, piece. out, and... Yeah, he just, just, I'm done, bye-bye. That's it. So strange. But so would you recommend this nowadays? Oh, no, this falls heavily into a niche film where you have to want it to, to do it. Um, yeah. I will probably queue it up once in a while, be just because it's Tron. 
<laughs> I've never been to watch it again. <laughs> okay, maybe not never, but I don't think I'm going to watch it again. Um, unless I walk by and, oh, okay. I'm Ooh, really cycles. sick. I'm stuck on the couch. It's on TV. All right, I'll watch it. On TV. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, so that's going to wrap up this episode. But if you want to catch us, see us, yell at us, talk at us, go to uh, the Reinders Podcast on uh, uh, gmail.com or Facebook. Yeah. Yep. The Facebook. We're on the Facebook, and now we're on iTunes and uh, SoundClouding. Ooh. I know. It's all SoundCloudy. It's all like we're in Tron Land. Are we? We're sending You're democracy making... to the users. I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Bam.